Hey everyone! So today's video, what I'm just going to get down to straight and narrow is tips on how to sleep better. See, most people don't really realize what, what is the purpose of sleep, like poof, we fall asleep. But basically the essential function is repair, 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 repair. But in order to do that, we got to actually provide the right environment and the right conditions for our body to be able to do so. So what people, uh, a good thing uh, to point out that people don't realize is that during sleep, we're detoxing, we're detoxing. The liver's cleaning itself um, and that's also the time when we use a lot of water. Water is the process that we use to basically create the detox pro detoxification process to be fully functional. So if you're going to bed dehydrated and that's going from the whole day or even from your whole week or etc., um, you know, you're not going to get the most functional sleep. So you might be one of those people, which is common, or maybe you've definitely guaranteed experiences once in your life, is um, you've gone to bed, you've had the eight hours or seven hours or like a really extended dead kind of sleep period of time, but you've woken up exhausted and you just go, why the hell is that possible? I've had a long time of sleep. So first thing I need to point out in terms of better sleep is routine. Whether you like to believe it or not, we are animals and creatures of routine and schedule and our body gets used to a pattern. If we're going to do something at a fixed time um, every day, like go to bed at 11 and you wake up just say maybe 6 or something like that or 7, whatever your routine is, that's okay. But you need to be consistent in it. And people who uh, usually go out to parties on weekends come home really late and they're experiencing hangover. Maybe they think it's just drinking. It's not. There's actually a thing that I've termed now. It's called the sleep hangover. You literally have it. I've gone out now because I'm a conscious partier that I don't drink. I don't do alcohol. I don't do drugs. Uh, when I come home and I have a disrupted sleep pattern, uh, that actually does create a sleep hangover. So that is a real thing. So please be aware of that and conscious of that. So first thing, I've written quite a few things down just so I don't forget in this video. Um, but number one, right, uh, I need to point out how you sleep, right? People must never, ever, ever, ever sleep on their left hand side. This is coming from Chinese medicine that I've learned from. Why? The left hand side is where your heart is. Your heart is what beats and will create the circulation, the detoxification process, right? If we're sleeping on our left side, our whole body is basically crushing our heart and it's going to struggle to beat as properly as it should. So if you're someone with a heart condition on top of that, uh, it's a no-go. Always either sleep on your right hand side or on your back. The best, the best, obviously, the best uh, position would be ideally sleeping on your back. There's no pressure on your body parts. Also, if you're sleeping on your right, now we're talking from an osteopath or chiropractic's point of view, uh, which I'm studying, is that, of course, you're going to be putting your body out of misalignment. So, you know, if you are going to sleep on your side, it's good to get a pillow cushion. It's good to get a pillow cushion to put between your knees um, and then you can create the right uh, spinal alignment for the body. Right. Next thing. People need to know that on average, it takes three and a half to four and a half hours for your body to digest food. And that's talking about body in a good condition. But unfortunately, most of us are not in that state, whether it's because we're stressed, uh, we overeat, we overindulge, we do alcohol, drugs, bad foods, heavy foods, um, whatever you name it. The body is not working at its optimum level as that it should in the perfect ideal world and with perfect ideal conditions. So as a result of that, uh, if you go to bed and you eat one hour before, two hours before, three hours before, bad. Because what's happening now, your energy can only be focused on one process at a time. So it's going to be focusing on digestion. And then while you're asleep, it's going to have to work double the time to digest the food. Um, and you don't even have the state to burn it off because you're in sleep mood, um, rather than working on repair. So goal is to try and go to bed at least five to six hours before before you know, to go to bed before eat, not eating five to six hours before right I know it's not easy I know it's not hard I even fell in the pattern when I was once in corporate and I used to get home at 11 and I was starving and drained and you just thought rah and just so tired and exhausted after just even eating that you just pass out in bed but the goal is if you're gonna eat something do something simple like something that's already digested, right? So if you uh, can have a soup or a smoothie or a shake, that's a protein shake, whether it's uh, plant-based or not, 
um, that it's easy to digest and break down because what you're doing is you're really minimalizing two to three hours of digestion time. So from the mastication or the chewing process down into the stomach that will use the acid to dilute uh, whatever you've consumed into a soup like substance. So if you're already mitigating that process, you're already uh, way ahead and then you can at least get the energy that you need. Right. Two, uh, point three, I don't know, too many points, but anyway. Uh, next thing, electronics. You need to try, if possible, I know in London it's not quite easy because your room is your home essentially because of sizing space issues that we live in shoeboxes, but ideally keep electronics out of the room. Any plugs that are on at the socket, switch them off because they are emitting electric frequencies and try at least one to two hours before not use your phone if you're going to use your phone put all the lighting down to like bare minimum because there's the blue light that can affect uh the sleeping state to be activated in your in your mind in your in your brain um and just try to cut that all off and not do anything like netflix or any type of series or dramas or something that's really um going to hyper sensitize your body so if it's like you're going to watch a murder program that's going to like traumatize you on a subconscious level or maybe really loud noises or blasting music you need to put yourself in a peaceful peaceful kind of calm state in order to help right cool next point indoor plants are really really powerful if you have like plants everywhere which i do um they actually emit a beautiful frequency. There's been tests done where it's kind of like those ECG patches that they put on plants. And plants actually sing an individual song. And the best way to explain it, it's like classical music. So what they're doing is they're emitting frequencies into your body to bring some calm state into your body or your energy field. So good to have plants. And then they also help improve the oxygen uh, level quality in the room as well. So that it can help you with better sleep. Right. People don't know this, but if you've ever been into a hotel room, which I'm sure everyone has at, one, at least once in their life, you'll notice they blast the aircon at like fridge, freezer-like temperatures, right? The purpose is actually your body needs to drop temperature as a prerequisite in order to drop into sleep state. So that's why you've probably woken up in the middle of the night going like, oh, I'm so hot, like, ugh, I can't sleep. It's because your body needs to be at a reduced temperature state in order to sleep. So if you're someone who needs uh, who wears a lot of clothes or maybe had a really hot shower etc etc it's good to peel back the layers like maybe shed some sheets maybe just use a fitted sheet um you know take off your socks don't ever sleep with socks on because a that's not good for you because again your feet are going to be detoxing and then if you're going to be sweating into your socks then that's going to be um as your uh, the temperature on your foot is hotter you're just going to reabsorb that detoxed um I guess bacteria back into your feet so it's kind of like a no-go you're defeating the process of the sleep process right or the detoxification process um yeah and then just maybe try wear as minimal layers as you can right next thing um if you are in a place that the lighting is not really well blacked out get a blackout curtain super cheap you know you can get one on uh, amazon for like 30 quid something like that or if you're living in a flat share, uh, for example, you can get a special made or earplugs if you if you can afford to, or you can just use earplugs and get an eye mask. So that will black out, uh, or that will black out the sight and block out the sound. So you can really minimize two senses of the body that can help you further deepen or retain that deep state of sleep that you want to get into, which is called REM, right? Uh, next thing people don't really realize, but is caffeine. Don't consume caffeine after two, even if you want to, you're addicted to. But caffeine alone is not just coffee. You need to realize black tea's got caffeine, green tea's got caffeine, even though green tea's good and has lots of antioxidants, it's still caffeine. Even consuming chocolate has got caffeine in it. So, you know, just be aware of these booby trap type foods that are or drinks that you can be consuming after a certain time period that will take a long time for your body to get through a lot of people have um nervous system issues very hypersensitive and then when they get activated and charged it really takes a long time just to basically get back to that state of calm especially in the day and world that we live in is very 
activated and very um uh how can i say we get so hypersensitized you know like there's so much action going around and on uh that we're just struggling to learn to be calm and that brings me to my next point is about try do a little five to ten minute meditation practice there's lots of apps you can download lots of beautiful youtube videos all available um just to get you into that state you know to do i think even a really good nice breath work little five minute just as you get into bed you just And I've termed this um, in my work as the check-in exercise. You know, we really just want to check in with ourselves going, how was your day? Let me reconnect with my body. Is there anything going on? What's upsetting me? How is my emotional state um, at this current time? And then with that, you can start to connect better with your body. But then you're also training because it's always a practice. You're training your mind just to say okay this is safe space now we're in bed you can just switch off now and we can calm down yeah so meditation very very powerful five minutes ten minutes it's not a lot i promise you we'll go like this and sometimes half the time we'll just even pass out from it so and that's what you want right in terms of because i'm a nutritionist as well uh supplementation really 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 powerful and i do it every night is magnesium uh, you get different types, you get sprays, you get tablets, you get powders. For me, again, tablet takes a long time to break down, so powder. Uh, I have a brand uh, company that I work with that I'm partnered with, so I'll leave it actually in the comments box below for you if you want to get um, the supplement that I use and recommend. Really high quality for good value. Um, and if actually I'll leave, you know what, I'll leave my... Um, I'll leave my practitioner code because then I can actually get you a discount as well. So if you're interested, um, but magnesium one hour before bed, you just do a scoop and some warm water. So you're getting a bit of hydration as well. And then also the supplementation from it. But what it does is magnesium helps reduce cortisol in the body. Cortisol, in summary, is the stress hormone that gets activated from the adrenal glands um, when we get into a stress-like state. And I mean, I can't say or know anyone really who's not ever stressed in their life. I mean, even if it's 1%, 10% or 100%, we all get stressed. And this will just actually help reduce the cortisol levels in the body. So that helps your nervous system calm down. And again, that helps you deepen or get into a better sleep state. And when you sleep, you actually have a lot better quality of sleep. Right um chamomile is also really really good tea uh, herbal teas are really really helpful as well you know you can do licorice peppermint just good soothing calming um different types of uh teas and the last thing as well if you have a bath you know a hot shower or something just uh you got to find your activity that is your peace right what gives you happiness some people it's singing some people it's watching a movie some people it's reading a book some people it's just having quality time with their loved ones some people it's just having a moment of solitude so if uh, you know who you are and what resonates with you to bring you into that calm state i encourage you to do that activity or program to have it like you know a couple of hours before bed or just before bed so you know you got to program ourselves like we are like basically a robot how are you programming your robot right let's program it with good habits let's program it with teaching so we just say okay so the body knows one hour before bed you're going to take magnesium so that goes okay i know i'm gonna switch down and therefore i can calm down so training your nervous system at the end of the day so that is how um it works and I think that's enough tips for uh, one not really bite-sized 15 minute kind of video but if you like it uh, or if you have questions please send a, please do a like put some comments in the comment box if you need some different advice um, I've put my website and any information if you need to contact me and then if you can please subscribe because I would be really really grateful and this helps encourage me to actually help uh, put up more videos every day um, or every week or when I get a chance to just to basically do more teachings and sharings with everybody because there's so much information out there that I'm trying to absorb and I want to impart onto everyone else so sending you lots of love bye